Okay, 11 o'clock, we may as well get going. Uh, a few minutes to use to run through today, um, and then in a change of plan, because uh, unfortunately, uh, Richard Hulf of Hydrogen One is um, ill, so we're going to get him back in a couple of weeks' time. But instead, we've um, very kindly um, managed to secure uh, Nick Montgomery and uh, Brady Biggins um, of Schroeder Real Estate Investment Trust, so they'll be talking to us, talk to me later. So, uh, news first. Um, Three things I've pulled out. So, Age of Energy Impact finally published some results. JP Morgan Multi Asset is the latest fund to uh, decide it wants to merge. And Aberdeen Private Equity is planning a buyback program. So, those three things. Um, Age of Energy Impact first, then. So, what we've got published this week are the results to the end of December 2022, which is the first set of results it was um, ever going to publish. Uh, and the entrance to 30th of June 2023. We've already had uh, an update as at the 30th of September. That got out just before Christmas. But with these uh, announcements, it is quite likely uh, that any minute now, maybe even Monday, Tuesday, next week, we'll see the restoration of the listing. Um, it's pretty poor reading, as you might expect. So the December NAV more or less halved down to 49.3 cents. It's crawled back a little bit since, but not really uh, materially. Um, and it's all around, as we know, the, that ROMS project in India, because we've talked about this quite a lot. And you can see all this here. So, so basically, if you look down here, they, they invested this much money here. And these are all the adjustments that knock this back. Most of them are things like the penalty, penalties for the ROMS project. I'll explain a bit more about this as it works. Um, so they now think this is going to be finished by the end of March 24. When they made this announcement, they've, they've had three lots of solar panels delivered out of um, five, and they think they can get everything installed and operational by the end of March. And I think they kind of have to do that so they don't get more penalties. Um, and But the, the situation kind of switched between December 22 and June 23. So in December 22, They've decided this is the complete write off. We're not going to go ahead with that. We're just going to take the hit. Um, and that was one valuation. By the end of June, with the prices of solar panels coming back down again, they decided that it was worth pursuing with this. Um, and uh, the net present value of it now is, is minus 18.8 .8 million. That was in the end of June value. Um, that's improved again at the end of September. So it's now minus 14.6, but they've now invested $10 million. So. And the rest of the fund, uh, we've got three operational sites in the Philippines where there was some dispute with the fund manager about what the power price outlook looks like, but they've, they've obviously taken a big haircut to everything they could possibly do. We're really probably catching the to it. They've got six other operational sites in India uh, that are geared, um, but reasonable, I think, and I think they're doing okay. And they've got two tiny things in Vietnam, and I think that was supposed to be a platform for a much bigger operation there. One of those apparently isn't doing very well, and they, they're trying to find out why. So um, it's not even, you know, even with all of this stuff going on, it's not perfect. Plus the ROMS project that they're going to carry on building, um, and then we'll see what happens to it when it's done. Um, it might make sense just to try and sell it you know, to sort of knock all that on the head. Uh, and there was another development project that the manager had signed up to. I mean, remember, there was some argument about whether the board knew about that or not. Um, and they've now put that up for sale as well. So they're not actually going to build that. There's still about $44 million worth of cash there. Um, and so if he, they could still turn around and say, look, this doesn't make sense. We're going to give you the money back. Um, but I think the plan at the moment is to carry on going because obviously shareholders voted against the liquidation of the fund on the 19th of December. But it doesn't really work unless they can make it bigger. The fund is, is way too small. Um, and it's hard to imagine how you can grow this when it's going to be on, I think, quite a big discount. So I'm almost thinking you have to more or less launch a new fund and then absorb this into it. Um, 
but that might need markets to become a little bit more optimistic than they are at the moment. So we're just going to have to wait and see. But but definitely there's a core of shareholders who wanted to be investing in Asian renewables and who still think there's an opportunity here. Um, it may be that they can persuade some of them to put up more money. We'll have to wait and see. JP Morgan Multi-Asset. Um, it's not a big fund, as we know, but it does create quite close to asset value, and that's partly because it's been doing okay. Um, this is the returns in the flexible investment sector, ranked over one-year NERFs, and you can see it's running second there. Behind Hansa, which has had a bit of a boost because um, it plans to sell its um, Mission Wilson stake, or some, something's going to happen to that. Maybe, maybe this is something that the Brazilian business underneath that. So that's sort of unusual. But definitely this has been doing an awful lot better than the other funds that are designed to kind of protect your capital. So things like personal assets and capital gearing and rougher. It's been doing okay. And I think, you know, it's sort of starting to come into its own. Um, so it's sort of annoying, therefore, that the board's decided they're going to just merge with the global revenue income. It's the normal kind of arrangement. We've seen this, we talked about this quite a lot over the last few weeks. Um, so section one Monoskiing scheme done on a formal asset value basis. JP Morgan's covering all the costs of this, so there's no real hit to NAV. There's no cash exit, but I think the uh, idea is because JTGI is trading at premium, you can just switch into JTGI shares and then sell those if you want to. Um, so yeah, from that point of view, it all kind of all stacks up. And um, these are the listed, uh, this you know, rationale for the um, doing the deal that the more put in. So obviously, JGGI has been performing better. It's trades a slightly better rating, but really quite small. Um, economies to scale are obvious, that's true. And you get a better, more liquid chair. But you're going to get quite a big hit to your income. Um, and the, the whole point of Make was that it's a um, high yielding fund with low volatility of the, the NAV returns, um, which is unusual. I think it's probably actually unique. So JGGI yields less, so you're losing about 25% of your income. Um, and I think for, for a lot of shareholders, they were probably hanging on for the high income and they're going to be miffed about that. You're also losing your exposure to a low volatility portfolio. So what I've done here, this is just for a section of selection of funds. I've worked out the five-year standard deviation of the NAV returns, uh, annualised that, and and you can see that mate is a bit more volatile than the capital gearing or personal assets. Um, actually, it's less than rougher, which is interesting, um, but. JGGI is the highest of the lot, uh, which goes with its sort of like growth equity type portfolio and manufacturing and of capital. Um, so that is quite a big adjustment, and I'm I'm not sure whether mate share was going to be happy or not. Um, I've tried to talk about this in other city work after I've done as well. We'll we'll, we'll see. Um, and then finally, how many private equity opportunities? I think this is a ten year chart. You can see this is a great fund, really. Just look at that NAV. It just goes up and up and up and up. The weird thing is this disconnect with the share price. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. I know I've been being banging on and on and on about private equity discounts and how they're too wide, but this one in particular just seems daft. It's about 36.7 discount. This is a big liquid fund as well. Uh, I know half of it is owned by one shareholder, but nevertheless, it's still um, a decent size. Um. They've just sold part of their stake in Action, which is the big supermarket thing that's been driving three ice performance and is almost all of three ice portfolio now. Um, so they've freed up some cash. They, they've done it in line with the engine valuation. So there's no kind of hit to NAV, and it just, again, it just underscores the fact that these NAVs are correct. Um, they're going to use a significant proportion of that money to fund buybacks. Um, and the board is thinking, while it's trading on this bigger discount, any time we get a big chunk of money in from a disposal, we might as well just extend the buyback program and keep it going. So um, <clears throat> there's also no change to the enhanced dividend policy, so they're already giving you money back at NEV through the, through the enhanced dividend. 
I just think this is this is pretty illusory, and it should just add to the NAV because you've got obviously you're buying a big discount, <coughs> and um, maybe help narrow the discount. I hope so. And just to ram this point home, this is <coughs> um, the private equity sector and the global equity sector mashed together. Global equities in blue, private equities in pink and white, and um, ranked over 10 year net performance. And you can just see the private equity funds do much better than the listed ones. And this is over a really long term. And um, I just cannot get into my head why people hate the private equity stuff so badly, so much. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. But there you are. There's there's only private opportunity talk there. It's basically it's not that far behind Scottish and Australian Mitchell Train, and it is one of the best performing of all funds over the years. But it definitely doesn't deserve to be in the thirty six discount. Anyway, right over. Um, that's all I wanted to say. And I do actually take Kevin's point here that he's put on the Q and A platform. And so um, yeah, Fidelity has has taken APO off. It's platform for, for new purchases. Uh, that's all around this stupid cost disclosure problem that hopefully we have got sorted out. Um, definitely the sort of central gang of people that were driving the are quite enthused about the um, sort of private treasury response to what's going on. Um, you'll know because we, we put it on our site, there's a, well over 300 people um, put a submission into the treasury saying you've got to do something about this. And fingers crossed, something will happen. And so we'll have to wait and see. Good. That's enough on that.